how you can live the life of your dreams starting now. It's Fat Tuesday. Celebrate with a fry burger. Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello, 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 and welcome to Tuesday. Welcome to Fat Tuesday. It is February 25th, 2020, day 165 of Gotta Get On Ellen. Now, do you throw everything out the window because it's Fat Tuesday? Do you celebrate Fat Tuesday? I will not be celebrating Fat Tuesday. Um, it is not a big deal. I do not do Lent. Uh, so there is no reason for me to get it all out before Lent starts. I hop, however, will be having a free short stack available to you today. I don't know if there's certain purchase required, what have you, I just saw that you can get a free short stack from IHOP today. So free food is always a good thing. So if you are celebrating Fat Tuesday, I wish you much fattiness throughout the day. There is a uh, bakery in Philadelphia. They've been positioned outside of it all morning on the news, and they are I think I'm going to say it wrong. They are selling false nuts today. They only sell them two days a year. Yesterday and today there is a line that is forming. It's been forming since before 5 a.m. I've never had a false nut. Apparently they're a big deal. You know, you only offer something two days a year and people are going to come out for it. That is one way to drum up some good marketing. Only offer it twice a year. And back to back like that. So people are like, oh, I got to go get them because I won't be able to get them for another whole year. I guess it's working for them. The line outside the bakery tells it all. So if you are looking for something a little off the wall, a little interesting, a little odd, think of Burger King. Now, you can't get it here. But in New Zealand, Burger King has introduced the French fry hamburger. Yes, that's right. It is a bun packed with French fries. And it has mayo and ketchup. I don't know. What do you think? Sounds disgusting to me. Disgusting. There's something about putting potatoes and making a sandwich out of it that just doesn't sit right with me. When we were um, away not that long ago, Joe had gotten a, I believe, like a turkey gobbler sandwich from Wawa, and that has mashed potatoes in it. I find that odd. I remember watching him eat it, and I was like, is there, is there mashed potatoes in that hoagie? He's like, yeah, gross. I need something with a little substance in between two pieces of bread. I don't have to be all mushy, right? Yeah, I don't know. I'm getting grossed out just thinking about it. Uh, it is interesting to note that Wendy's, the restaurant, saw the announcement of their fry burger, and they tweeted that anything is better to put in between two pieces of bread than their meat. They have not responded. The fast food wars, the fast food Twitter wars continue. A couple in California has spent $50,000 to clone their dog. Apparently they lost their dog very suddenly. I think it was a snake bite. And they spent $50,000 to clone the dog. I think the dog was, you know, fairly young, had a lot of life left in him. And um, they decided to clone the dog. 
rather than get another dog. That would probably be, at the most, two grand? Let's throw in an extra 48000 Now, here's the thing. You know I love my pets. You know I love my Tucker. One day when she is not here, I will be a blubbering idiot. That is my girl. That is my baby. She's been with me through thick and thin. Tucker and I have been together longer than my husband and I. So I, I rue the day that happens, although I know it is coming. We all know dogs don't live as long as people do. Here's the thing about the cloning. You can get a dog that looks exactly like your old dog, but it will not have the same personality. It just won't. So what is the point? You can get another dog that looks exactly like your old dog without cloning it and spending $50,000. I think it's kind of crazy. If I had $50,000 to spend and I could get the same exact dog with the same exact personality, I still don't think I would do it. It's kind of creepy. Tucker version 2? No, no. It's kind of crazy. You get another dog. Eventually, after you've, you know, mourned the loss and taken time to grieve, get over it. It's not that easy. I, I'm not trying to say it's easy. But what I'm trying to say is you get another dog. I don't know. Am I being insensitive? Am I being heartless? I don't know anybody who loves their dog more than me. But even if I could get an exact replica with the exact same personality, I don't know if I would. It would be weird. It still wouldn't seem like Tucker to me because I would just know. Not Tucker. I don't know. It's all very weird. Sometimes science is just too far ahead. Sometimes we shouldn't have these options available to us. Just my opinion. So I had put out a topic today that kind of relates to the blog post. And I think I'm going to go a little bit in reverse order today. And I'm going to do the blog post first. And then I'm going to go back to the topic. Because I want to kind of talk about some of your answers. And the question I posed was, if there were a place you could wake up every day for the rest of your life, where would that be? I don't mean... On vacation, I don't mean special occasions. I mean something that you can do every day or where you can be every day for the rest of your life. Uh, vacations are different. You know, we, we go on vacation and we go and treat ourselves to places that we've never seen and places that we've never been. Sometimes we fall in love with them and it becomes a place that we want to go to more often. Maybe it becomes a place we want to live. That's how you figure this stuff out. But how do you get the life of your dreams? You know, one of my favorite quotes ever is, design a life you don't need a vacation from. So how do you do that? It's not as hard as you think. I've already done it for the most part. I want more. There is another way of life I want to live, and I am reaching for that every single day. But I live at the Jersey Shore. This is what I've wanted to do since the first time I moved here 18 years ago. Believe it or not, there are quite a bit of full-timers who live at the shore year-round. I love waking up to a view of the water every day. I love being minutes from the beach to go see a sunrise whenever I want or take the dog for a walk. Except between May and October. It's a no-no then. I love being in a position to host my friends and families. And uh, my friends and family and provide, provide a little haven for them when they want to get away. Once I moved away from the area 14 years ago to take a job in my chosen field, I made it a priority to get back. 
When I got engaged, I discussed with my future husband my dream to live at the shore full time. Asked if he was on board with that. He was. Thank goodness. It got to the point, though. I felt I had to choose between my love for my career and a love for where I live. So I did. I chose. I chose the shore. I gave up my career in radio and took all sorts of jobs before I was, thankfully, led back to radio. Then I got to live where I love and do what I love for a living. I had the love of my husband, good friends, family that likes to visit often because it's a vacation getaway when you visit me. I had it all. That's one of the tricks that I often tell people, you know, move somewhere where people want to come see you. I always thought it was cool that people will come here and, like, spend the night. Like, you don't do that in a normal area. You know, I would never just come for a weekend at my best friend's house and sleep over. It's so much more awesome when you get to spend that much time with people. Or sometimes it sucks so much that you have to spend that much time with people. (laughs) For the most part, it's a good thing. But then, of course, I lost my job about a year ago. I had to figure out what was next for my career, and that is when I started this blog and podcast. I love what I get to do every day. It lights me up. It gives me purpose. It fills me with joy to help other people live a happier, more fulfilled life. People often say to me, they can't believe I do a daily podcast. Most podcasts are weekly. They can be a lot of work. If you are a stickler for editing and making sure you sound flawless with no mistakes, it can take forever to prepare. But I came from a live radio background. There was no editing there. So I hit the record button, and whatever happens, happens. There are times, you've heard it, I lose my train of thought. I can't find the right word, or I say something goofy or stupid. But hey, you know what? That's called real life. We aren't all perfect, and I will never try to pretend to be in front of you. Here's the main reason I do it every day, though. It's because I love it. I took the part of radio that I loved and combined it with a desire to share my knowledge on how I became a happier person. I wake up full of joy every day, and that is what I want for you. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to write down, yes, write it down, your perfect day, not a vacation or holiday, a perfect day if you were just living your life. Draw from your experiences of what you love from vacation and special occasions and incorporate what you can into daily life. But if you could live out your days in any way that you wanted, what would that day look like? Start from the time you wake up and plan it out until the time you go to bed. Are you in the same place every night or do you wake up in different places as an avid traveler? Is there a spot that you love more than anywhere you've ever been Is it feasible to move there full-time and make it your home? Put as much detail into this scenario as possible. Then start working toward it. Make the decisions that will lead you to where you want to go. Where do you want to live? What do you want to do to bring in money? You can even still work for someone else and have a lot of freedom. I'm reading a book right now called The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. It explains... How you can go about gaining a lot more freedom from your typical 9 to 5. If you want to lessen your work hours, this is a great read. 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. I someday want to wake up in Europe for a month at a time. Spend a few weeks in Hawaii every year. Go to Florida in the winter months. And since I do what I do over a computer every day, I know I can do it from anywhere. That is my dream. That is my goal. But I have to start bringing in the money first. As some of you know, I'm not really bringing in any money right now. I'm very happy, but I won't be when the bank tells us to get out of our dream home. But I am working on all kinds of ways to bring in money, and someday I know I will have more than I ever dreamed of. It's going to take some time. I am very lucky in the fact that my husband makes enough to almost support our lifestyle. Not quite, but close. Things have been tight for us. Since I've been working at home, but I have faith in what I'm doing. I'm also lucky that my husband believes in me and is supportive of my giving this business a go. He won't regret it. 
I'm only bringing this up to prove that it's 